What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with week 28, seven months of play in my defenseless free-to-play account. Now, I was going to do a regular defenseless stream, but honestly, I just feel like right now I'm just waiting to hit level 70, and there's not much. So I'll show you a little bit of where my roster has gone over the last week, but I really wanted to kind of take this opportunity to make a shorter video instead of having to tell people, hey, just watch all 27 weeks of my content. This will just be kind of a snapshot of everything that's happened, uh, starting with day one and then, you know, going through the 20 some odd, you know, weeks of play, kind of condensing it and just kind of talking about why I made decisions with like key notes on like hindsight and well at this point I probably should have gone back. So this is kind of like a refresher video because we're getting really close to the end of my progression in this series and before I start the next one. So starting off we have Defenseless free to play day one. This is the first day they announced the Star Lord event. Now my original intention for this was to skip the defenders completely. Now, this is before anyone was talking about starting with Asgardians or whatever or Bane and just discussing that the defenders while still an option, are no longer the most uh, useful option to start with. So I set the goal after talking with many people and advising many people to try this out, either on their secondary accounts or if they were new to the game and just were kind of interested, to target farm specific legendaries in an order to build a wider roster and allow your, your build to go a little bit more towards the war and the raid aspect of the game than having uh, that one key team. Now, obviously on day one, this doesn't look too unique to many players. Uh, most of these characters are characters you unlock through just playing the game. I believe when I had started, there was a 100 shard group giveaway, which was incredibly helpful to me uh, in getting to that point. But as you see later, we go on and go on towards unlocking Star-Lord. I actually over-farmed Groot the extra 100 shards, actually about an extra 200 shards, to prove that while that was a great start, it didn't actually make a difference. I was very well within reason to get a 5-star Star-Lord within the normal 90 day, <clears throat> 90 day or 3 month rotation they tend to go on. So just a quick snapshot of day one, you know, you, anyone who's played kind of remembers you get your starting characters, nothing really happened. Uh, moving next, we go to uh, week one, where you see what kind of difference a little bit of luck in the early game makes. Not necessarily for how you start, but how you decide on what you're going to progress to. Alright, so one week into play, and we see a little bit of a change. Obviously, I'm not able to farm root yet it's a little too early in the game but i did get one random shard of him i directly started to target farm yondu and you'll notice right here i have exactly 45 plus 5 or 50 minerva shards i got very lucky the first day of play was later on stream i had pulled a 50 drop of minerva uh, which is great not necessarily for the early game she wasn't necessarily amazing she did help in making sure i had a lot more three stars on fights than I normally would have. I didn't have to over invest in any character to accomplish some of the early villains or heroes nodes. She was a great addition to the team, but what really what it did was it allowed me to determine that no matter what, I was set when it came to going into Dark Dimension with uh, Minerva and Star Lord being kind of the optimal team. Now, this is not worrying about any super crazy drops or anything that I was supposed to get or didn't get. This was just where we were. You'll notice that, uh, you know, some characters you just unlock. JJ, uh, I unlocked this Hydra Sniper, and we'll just click play real quick to show that, like, I pretty much unlocked almost all of the shield minions. I have Crossbones, Hydra Armored Guard. You'll notice that in the first week of play, you're just going to open a lot of basic orbs, and you're probably going to be able to blitz a little bit uh, when you hit, you know, level 12. I think it's 12, maybe it's a... 16, uh, I couldn't tell you actually off the top of my head. Uh, but I was able to open some more Blitz Orbs. I was able to get a little bit more value out of Premium Orbs with the new player offers that, that came out. 
Uh, and you'll see that uh, there was a new player calendar at the time that gave me one Mega Orb. Unfortunately, I pulled 100 shards of Namor on that. Which, great, I got a new character, and eventually I, I probably would care to unlock him. But as far as an early player goes, Namor is not going to matter. He is a war offense character, and I haven't even unlocked war yet. So we're not really prioritizing that. You'll notice that the Luke Cage is at the bottom of the roster. That was more of a symbolic thing to say, like, I'm not going Defenders. Obviously, at some point, I unlocked all the Defenders, and now I'm using them because you don't just ignore a team. They all have some value, whether it be for war or certain raid nodes or whatever. But uh, for this point, and I think for the first maybe month or two, uh, you'll see that the lowest person on my roster was almost exclusively Luke Cage as kind of a point of principle. But... You know, one week into the game, you've unlocked, you got 50 Wolverine shards, you have uh, a, a handful of characters unlocked off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure this is almost 25 characters, so you can kind of start seeing what you need to build out through uh, with a little bit of luck. Now, everybody's going to get a little bit of luck somewhere or the other, it's just what that luck looks like. Now, I pulled 50 Minerva, someone may pull 50 thing shards, you know, and... and while any character you get in the early game is great, especially for players who've never touched this game before, or this kind of game, where it's just kind of exciting to get their hands on something new and shiny, one thing you'll notice is the difference between the top of my roster and these guys down here. I had a very low investment line for a lot of characters. You'll see early, early on, not a single character was brought over level 30, and a lot of times this is because I, I kind of needed them to complete through content, maybe get a little bit of testing. Uh, very rarely did I put gear into characters that weren't important, but I did bring characters up to a specific level, uh, and over time this level kind of goes down to level 20, you'll see in future videos. I just wanted to make sure that every character I unlocked had some value for me, even if it was just Blitz Team A, and you can kind of see based on the lines here, and how close in power everyone is. I just use these as Blitz teams to get a handful of Blitz credits because one of my major farms was, of course, Mantis at the time, and things worked out. One thing I do want to do is scroll down a little bit to show, you know, you're, I'm getting a lot of extra shards on other characters too. This is from Milestone Orbs, which are absolutely phenomenal, something that wasn't in the game when I had originally started. So you don't really think about those extra five random character shards, but by completing the game and accomplishing generic tasks that you're going to have to do anyway, you're just going to get free character shards. It doesn't help you when it comes to control, so my advice is still to always target farm towards a goal, uh, but it is nice to know that eventually you won't have to worry. You're going to unlock a handful of characters that later on you can decide, well, you know what, now that I have this character, uh, or maybe a meta change or something comes up and you're like, this character just got reworked or now they're really good and I have them, so maybe I'll put a little bit into them as time goes on. Uh, but that's the one week recap, you know. I'm level 30 something, 36 probably. Uh, I didn't play hyper aggressively on this account, so that's pretty good for one weekend. Uh, this one I wanted to go into a lot of detail on to show the difference of seven days played will be with or without luck or anything but now moving into the next video we'll kind of see where i start focusing on everything so week two very simply i've been able to push up to about level 45 you can tell because it's the highest level investment i have in characters my group started his farm i wouldn't have unlocked him yet 31 out of 45 you know or yeah whatever that works out to yandu was a target farm every day Drax was a target farm every day in Arena. I was forcing my way up as high as I could. My goal was, as long as I could stay within top 500 of Arena, I'd be able to buy basically three purchases of a Arena character every two days. That mathematically is perfect math to make sure that you're always getting a good amount of Arena shards uh, towards characters. The only thing I didn't actually have was core, so I was very stingy with them early. Uh, I could have worked on a specific team and pushed my way up through Arena to get more cores, but ultimately everything in this game is a trade-off. Whatever you decide to work on, 
you're just pushing something else to later. So for me, I thought I would deal with Arena later as I had built up better characters, knowing a little bit more about the end game in Arena because I've played this game for so long. I know that once you get to a certain point, it becomes easier to kind of progress through the arena meta without worrying about working on one team. A lot of people who do will have a lot of early success in arena, but start to fall off as they tend to rely on whatever that one team was more than maybe they should. And I knew that I would trade a little bit of value now for a lot of value later by doing this. So we have Drax, Yandu, and Groot. That's pretty much the core of like most of the teams I do, and for the early game, Yandu is adequate. You also notice I've been farming Ravager Bruiser. Now this was kind of a flex choice. My option was farm two or three characters from the Blitz store, or target farm Ravager Bruiser with energy. Now ultimately, Ravager Bruiser's node is dirt cheap. I think it's a 60 or 80 energy node. Uh, so farming him once a day every day really didn't hurt. He also counted towards, I believe, the hero's farm that I was required to do. It was either heroes or villains. I don't recall off the top of my head. But it wasn't like a completely meaningless farm. I wanted to make sure that I had the characters I needed, so I started early. Would I recommend that? No, but if, you, if Star Wars is your number one priority, which for me it was, I didn't want to rely on Blitz or Bluck. And as you'll see later, Blitz or Bluck actually hurt me. I should have tar targeted farming like Mantis and or Gamora very early instead of just opening Blitz Orbs because a lot of the characters I got out of Blitz Orbs weren't impressive anyway. And there's too many characters in the Blitz Orb and they're only adding more right now. So it's really hard to control the drops. You know, some people will say it's better to get uh, more character shards for cheaper. I don't think all character shards are created the same. I think that there are characters that are great. I think anyone will tell you that. You know, hand sorceress shards are not worth the same as yo-yo shards. And I don't think anyone would disagree with that statement. So, you know, even if I got 10 hand sorceress shards, I would have rather gotten, you know, five yo-yo shards for just that same comparison. And that's kind of where it goes into more shards only matters if it's more shards of the character you want or character you need to get to a specific level. Uh, other than that, no amount of hand minion or merc arbitrary minion is going to be an amazing drop when there are things like Star Lord and Shuri and eventually Black Bolt that are really important. Um, but you'll notice another thing I was working on at this point was I was kind of bringing up my shield team, you know? Because the shield team was the team I planned on using aggressively uh, as the early game U4, U5 raid team, get them all to about 10k, um, prioritizing on security, uh, shield medic, and eventually trooper to get the damage through, or maybe flexing in a character like Quake um, from the Blitz stores that's very easy to unlock her. Um, using Punisher, I had access to Minerva, so I was putting a little bit into her, but uh, she wasn't really performing, her heal wasn't great, you're not really killing stuff, and when you do, a lot of these characters with like really good endgame kits, you don't see when you only have enough ability materials to get them to tier 1 or 2 or even 3, you really gotta find that 6664 line, so you'll see that. Uh, a handful of other characters were invested in, just enough to be good enough, like look at my heroes right here, it's Groot, Drax, Shield Security, Shield Medic, Punisher. I probably needed Spider-Man for a note or two. Uh, I've used him for a while. You'll see that Spider-Man doesn't actually get much stronger than this as we go, but I'll scroll up a little bit through the video. And uh, we've unlocked a handful of additional characters compared to where we were, but I wasn't 100% confident that this is where I needed to be when it comes to you know, what I wanted to go forward. Now, I think in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see some huge changes in things that happen, whether it be because of events during the game or, or luck. But this is something that I want everyone to keep in mind. When you play this game, you play it with everybody. So it's always a big deal. Um, and you're always playing not only against the entire community, but amongst the community of people who started with you. So sometimes you get a little bit of a boost, but so did everybody in your arena shard if they happen to give out a free character. Or if a mistake is made and they send out a compensation package that gives everybody a mega orb. Uh, one of the things about free-to-play is when you're free-to-play, 
you only get what everyone gets. You know what I mean? Like, you only get whatever your effort is or whatever stuff is given out. You can't make a purchase or anything. You could maybe, if there's luck involved, but that's the same kind of thing. If you go really hard in Arena and there's a core offer that's phenomenal and inside that core offer is an orb and in that orb is something that's perfect, it's still like layers of RNG, so you really can't control it. And just real quick, I wanted to show the bottom of the roster. You're seeing more and more characters become unlocked. I'm getting additional stars on people. We're getting closer to unlocking characters like Hulk. This is obviously 14 days of play. Hulk is almost unlocked at four star. Uh, Ms. Marvel and Riot Guard can't even farm Ms. Marvel. She's almost unlocked. Uh, I'm obviously not spending arena credits on Riot Guard. So you're seeing a lot of characters are becoming unlocked. And even at the bottom, you don't have to guesstimate you know, how far I am away from characters like Shocker or Rescue or Green Goblin because clearly they're among the highest characters I have any shards of through random events. Now moving on to week three. Uh, week three you'll see a little bit of the same. You know, nothing's changed here and that's because I'm doing U4. Now I didn't jump into an alliance that was carrying me. I pretty much for the first month of the game just played in the free alliance I got. I kept looking for an alliance that wasn't doing endgame content i would advise you to please if you're willing if alliance is willing to carry you from a very low level uh and get you all that really great end game gear like go for it it's going to be helpful but i don't think the average player is going to have that experience so i always wanted to make sure that i gave as close to the average player experience when i did this free to play as possible as a matter of fact i kind of nerfed it a little bit because i didn't necessarily always get all my energy drops so uh, a really diligent free-to-play player would be way more efficient in what uh, they accomplished than I was, but I'm also managing two accounts and stream and stuff. So, you know, like it's different. If this is your main account, you probably would have gone a little bit further, but you will notice right behind my fat head, which I can't really move because you just see another copy of my fat head um, when I still had my camera in scene was uh, Hella. Hella was a gift given by the Tadano Mac calendar so everybody in my arena shard who started around the time i did whether it be week this is week three or you know anything like that uh got a free hella now i'm not gonna lie to you that's a pivot and if you know what i mean like whatever your plan was when you get a character as strong as hella uh now you might not know that so you might have to kind of ask like hey i just got a hella is she important to like a community i wouldn't necessarily go to reddit or anything like that but i'm sure there's a content creator you trust somewhere that's the one I, I might go to, maybe a friend, maybe an alliance. They might say, hey, I just unlocked Hella. How are they? Even in global chat. When you get a character that strong, you don't have an opportunity to ignore it. You know, so I had the option of continuing to work towards, you know, the shield minions or kind of pivot into using a really strong free character I ended up getting, that character being Hella, that's what I chose to do. So Hella became a high priority for me. That said, if you guys can kind of put it together now, my villains campaign at this point is crushed, you know? You'll notice I have my max level now is level 50, but I'm not bringing up every character to level 50. And there's a couple reasons why. The first is gold, I'm saving it. Um, I don't need every character to be level 50. Like I said, I set very moderate goals, top 500 in arena, making sure I'm doing as much I can in raids, making sure I'm investing. I'm trying not to spend training materials here. So yes, of course I could have brought up Drax and maybe Minerva, maybe Shield Medic. And even at this point, if you see Shield Security and Shield Medic, Shield Trooper, they're all the highest level of the characters. They're even a higher level than some of the guys I'm currently target farming with my hearts on them. It's because I was still using them as a raid team. I had just picked up Hela within a day or two of this video uh, going live. So it was important that I pivot into Hella and make sure that everything like, kind of fits with what she's doing. So I was looking at characters that work with Hella, and more importantly, when you bring Hella into a fight, if you guys already know this, she comes with Greg, and Greg is the sixth man on the team, truly val invaluable. So this was the pivot of week three. Um, I was as lucky as the other, you know, two or 3,000 people that are in my arena shard when they started, so whether they were willing to be free to play or spenders everyone was as lucky as me so it's not like a one in a million it's more of like a one in three thousand kind of shot that uh, i got the value but moving into the rest of the roster you'll see a couple of things the uh, most notable thing of course is always going to be at the bottom one thing I, I would always like to kind of point out is the amount of extra character shards you end up picking up through progression 
So here we are at the bottom, and you'll notice, like, here's that Luke Cage. You, if you remember, he's not doing anything. And now it's 37 of 45 rescue. That's from Blitz Orbs. Uh, Korath the Pursuer, Cree Royal Guard, Daredevil. Haven't farmed him a day, never bought a single farm. They changed him from a 100 shard unlock to a 45, and here I am, almost ready to unlock Daredevil. You know, I think I had pulled two 15s out of premiums and then a one off of a basic. Loki, surprisingly, Loki was almost done. You know, like, I can't farm him until you get to, like, end game Mystic Node. And I think it's like Mystic 2, 6, or 3, 6, or something like that. Loki was almost unlocked, and that's going to be a huge boost because I already have Hela, and those two work very well together. So I was looking forward to that. Miles was a character that I was already telling people, like, I think he's a little bit uh, underrated. I think in the early game, he really helps break open a lot of the matchups for Arena. So for Arena offense, he's really great. Uh, but I had assumed, like I said before, that Blitz orbs were going to be great. You know, I, like, oh, I'll pull all these characters in Blitz orbs. No. As you see, I'm pulling a bunch of garbage characters in Blitz Orbs. You know, I'm getting five shards on, on Hydra Grenadier. Or, I don't think Hydra Grenadier, but you know what I mean? But I'm getting like, oh man, my, you know, my, my Strife. <laughs> I'm going to get a Strife. Like, that. those aren't, Blitz Orbs didn't give me the value of characters. So I did start target farming Miles, and I think in the next week, on the week four recap, you'll see that I've unlocked him because I just wanted to make sure I had him. Uh, Symbiote Spider-Man Milestone, this is the last thing I want to say, was going on during this event. Um, so I'm in my first, you know, three weeks of play, and I'm able to get about 45 shards of him. Now, that was not necessarily like a target farm thing of play. Obviously, I didn't spend any money, so this was just me, how much I, I could do. Uh, I can't get more than that. I don't unlock Simeon Spider-Man, spoiler alert, on the first pass, but when there's a Milestone character, Milestone characters generally, like three out of four times, have been really high-impact characters in this game. So... Uh, and on my main account, I had the luxury of having a, a symbiote Spider-Man from the first, and of course, this game, the past, like, really be able to power through and get as much as I could. Uh, I knew he was a great character, and I knew that he would help impact my roster, so I would spend gold in two places. I wouldn't level up characters, but I would buy everything that was in the, the store on cooldown, basically. That's how my gold was being spent in the early stages. I was buying any gear I could find, purple, green, blue, didn't matter. If it was a gear piece that cost gold, I bought it because guess what? They were all gonna matter. Whether it be right now or not, it could go either way. Uh, but ultimately, I just was buying gear because I was always gonna need gear. I was not leveling characters because not only does that take gold, it takes training materials and training materials are very hard to come by if you're not spending money and buying anything. They kind of come with a lot of weird packs and stuff, so if you're not willing to spend money, you really want to make sure you reserve your limited resources, and in the early stages of the game, training materials are one of them. So that's it for week three. Moving on to week four, we're going to see a huge change, right? So we, we know the characters in farming. You see I'm already at a four-star Drax. You see I'm almost at a four-star Groot. Yondu's hit three-star. Ravager Bruiser, he's a pity farm. You know, I, I farm him once... And then I forget about him for the rest of the day. I don't, like, double drop him. But Hela, Hela is now the number one powered character in my roster. She kind of jumped over a little bit. Now, you obviously, like I said, you can see my dumb face behind me if I move my head. But, uh, you know, these, you can kind of guesstimate that shield security is probably not higher than 8k. The rest of my characters. All this week was, was investing in Hela. And there was a reason why. We'll go as we go down to my roster. You'll see a little bit more. But... Hella became the carry for my arena fight. So my team be and my raid team and my arena team became Groot, Drax, Yondu, Hella, and actually uh, Minerva at this time, even though she wasn't great and I didn't have a lot of tech gear to put into her, she was the character I was paying attention to. Now I'm one week into the game, and this is, oh, I'm sorry, one month into the game, and at this point people are going to draw those comparisons. Gonna say, well, if you would target farm the defenders, you'd probably have one team at 50k or something like that. And it's true, I would have, and I probably would have been higher in arena. Now, I'm not going through the video necessarily to scrub and find where I was in the arena, but by all means, go back and watch these videos, wink, wink, you know. And you can kind of get a little bit more information about where I was, which was pretty consistently 
in the early stages between top 500 and top 250, which were the great payouts I was able to hold. Some days I'd get slingshot out, I'd be like 513. Other days I'd be at like 309. Some days I'd be at 212, you know? Like it was always just kind of a weird whenever I remembered to do my fight before the payout kind of thing happened. No big deal. Um, but this pivot, only thing you're noticing is the power of the characters aren't going up, but the shard count is. And that's because what I was doing was I was spending the energy that I start the day with, you know, like the, I'm going to buy this energy with cores or, or whatever refreshes. Those went to farming jack shards, or sorry, farming Groot shards, farming Yondu shards, farming Ravager Bruiser shards. Every other piece of energy I got for the day went exclusively into farming Hella. You'll also notice that I got a little bit lucky. Another Mega Orb I opened had pulled me a ton of Hella shards. Hella is a three-star unlock. Here I am with 75 of 80 Hella shards. So I'm pushing through. I'm going to have a very strong Hella early. That is the kind of pivot you would make. Now, the same exact conversation if somebody went in and said, Hey, everybody, here's a four-star Korath the Pursuer. We'd be like, no. No. Like, we're not doing this. You don't do the same thing, you know? So for me, I knew Hella was a monster. I knew she was going to help me in a lot of game modes. I knew that I was eventually going to need her for a lot of stuff I wanted to do. So I made her a priority. And as you go, you're going to see a theme of Hella being among the top five strongest characters in my roster. Um, just a quick view of seeing what else is on this. You'll notice that not much else has changed. I've been progressing a little bit more towards other characters. Maybe I was off by a week on Miles. Um, I unlocked an arbitrary Hawkeye, you know, Hand Sentry is now done, that might be from a Raid Orb or something, who knows, 15 shards could have been a premium, um, but again, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about going wide, there's this misconception that going wide means like, you want every character unlocked at level 5, or they're all the same thing, no, 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 going wide means opening yourself up to options, going tall is removing options, because you're saying, this is all I care about. Um, and it's not an issue of, I need to have this character, uh, all my team at level 20, gear tier 5, or else it's not worth it. That's not what going wide means. Uh, and at the same time, even when you say going tall, that doesn't necessarily mean, like, only work on these five characters, never touch anything else. But a lot of people tend to, like, miss the idiosyncrasies of going into, like, min-maxing when it comes to, especially mobile games, but games like this where, like, money does talk. So it's, it's more about having options. Now, if I have a Hawkeye unlocked, uh, it means at any point in time I can invest in him. So I just need to figure out if I ever need to invest in him. And up to this point, I didn't. And I don't think up until the entirety of my free-to-play account did I need to invest in Hawkeye, but maybe I could. It means you don't invest in a team past the point where they do whatever you need them to. So if your raid team is doing well at the raid you're doing, well, then you don't have to invest in them anymore. You can work on something else. You know, you can work on farming other characters or gearing up an arena character uh, or whatever. And if you start doing a harder raid or you need a team for a different raid, well, now you didn't overinvest in one team. Uh, you have enough resources, whether it be gold or training materials or gear or energy to farm any of those things kind of works out for you. So in one month of play, uh, Plenty of people probably were higher than me in a free-to-play concept. We're not comparing myself to people who are willing to spend money. That's a fool's errand. Never compare yourself to somebody, if you're free-to-play, who's spending money because uh, you can't win. You know, like, either you're stronger than them and then, you know, it doesn't actually matter because it doesn't, or you're weaker than them and you get, like, disheartened. Don't worry about that. Don't even think about that. Uh, the rest of these are just going to be kind of quicker because I got through the first week. Unless something pops up and, and shows up like, hey, this is an amazing thing that happened. I'm not going to go into detail. But now we're going to go into week five. I'll, run it. I'll let it run. You'll notice not much has changed. Hell got a little stronger. Groot and Yondu got a little stronger. Minerva, as we scroll up, you'll see that she's clearly purple. So I've been clearly working a little bit on her. Haven't really worked on many of the other characters. Haven't needed to work on many of the other characters for week five. Um... Nothing crazy is happening here. Just, you notice the title is Defended. It's because at this point, I've pretty much unlocked all of the Defenders. I got an arbitrary unlock on Daredevil. Uh, everyone, I believe, except Iron Fist. So uh, the joke is, you know, one month into the game and I got the Defenders, so I might as well use them. But you'll notice, too, uh, as we go on, Rhino and Green Goblin, as you can kind of see the bottoms of their head right around here. 
uh, and Shocker, they're ready and they're part of phase two of my plan, which is build up the Sinister Six team to get two legendaries. They're a pseudo priority. So as you can see over the course of a week, maybe one day I focused a little bit more on gear on a character. Maybe one day I focused a little bit more on target farming a Shocker. It, it kind of worked itself out where I just kept working. You also notice I had the making of a Hydra team. And trust me, during this time, the Red Skull Blitz was on, and I was very interested in trying a little bit for it. Uh, the reason why I couldn't is the Blitz started after I was in the 30-day cycle. And even if I did, I would have had a really cool Blitz team, but a war defense team, and I don't even think I was that active in war five weeks into the game. Uh, I think war unlocks at level 40, but more importantly, when your alliance is in... Uh, level 20, I believe. So you couldn't even touch war uh, in the first four weeks of the game unless you were spending money or got into an alliance that was already level 20, which does take a couple of days to get to level 20. It takes about 20 to 25 days or so. Uh, it scales up harder as you get to higher levels, obviously like 90 or 80 or whatever the cap is. I don't remember. But that's pretty much it. You know, you have to be in an alliance, you have to be with everybody. Around this point, I moved into a real alliance where, uh, you know, I was uh, I was the low end. It was me and, like, a handful of other people with less than 100,000 TCP. And then there was, like, one or two guys that were like, hey, look, we're almost a million. And it was kind of strange. Like, some people were going in and crushing the U4s or U5s we were doing. And the rest of us would just go in and derp a little bit. And it wasn't really... Uh, unreasonable because I just kind of fell into this alliance. It was the kind of thing where there's a whole bunch of people that are low power and a whole bunch of people that were relatively higher power comparatively uh, and nobody was really like, pushing and being hyper aggressive. We were just kind of doing our best. So I would go in, make sure I could do like one or two war fights, maybe clear up some of those garbage minions if I saw them. But that was pretty much it. I don't even remember if war was active at this point. But even if it was, you guys will learn real quickly, I didn't spend any of my war credits because there was nothing worth getting in the early game towards my strategy. So week five, pretty simple. Week six, Groot's four star. Yandu's pushing his way towards three. Drax is almost done. So once I hit five star on Drax in my head, and this is where I start making the first mistake. Pay attention to week seven's video, like what we go into next, because this is where I should have been like, Drax is good, we're good, I'm not touching Drax anymore, don't need to, it's cool, I'll start working on other characters, because I regret it later. Uh, Ravager Bruiser, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Hella 17k, I unlocked Spider Miles, kind of strapped the boots on him, got him to 11k. Minerva, gear tier 9 or 8, I don't remember which one that is, level 55. 10996. Now, a lot of that's because she's a two star, one red character. No big deal. Oh, you also notice I unlocked Ms. Marvel. Kind of started working on her. I felt like between her, Spider Miles, and the inevitable symbiote Spider Man, because I knew he was a milestone character that was coming back and I was eventually going to get him, there was some kind of team I wanted to be able to do city nodes. Now, a common misconception is if you don't have the defenders, you can't do anything that says city. Actually, that's not true. If you have the defenders, it's going to cost you more to do city nodes than if you have good characters like Ms. Marvel, Symbiote Spider-Man, Spider-Miles, Ghost Rider. So your option is the defenders are a great option to start working on towards city content, but then the city content's relevant. Anytime someone tells you block party is relevant, tell them that's why you farm the mercs from day one, right? Because gold is clearly the most relevant thing you can do, and every node you can use the defenders on, especially in like specialty raids, you can also use mercs. So if that's the argument people make, Go ahead and give them the actual fact of it's okay to not target farm one specific team, uh, but like they're not going to listen anyway because they're already making bad decisions. Uh, ultimately, this is the halfway mark, right? Six weeks. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know why I called it the halfway mark. I think it was the halfway mark to getting all of the characters I needed unlocked. Some of my titles are stupid. I'm a dumb person. Uh, oh, like you'll check. Like, this is just what happens, and we'll kind of see me scroll through a little bit. Now, here's another note. This was a free CM. You know, I had pulled a four red star CM, like, very early on. She was at the bottom of my roster. I wasn't paying attention. And then everyone got a free CM from the Widowmaker calendar. Uh, that's amazing. You know, like, everyone in the game got a free CM, or at the very least, eventually a free 100 CM shards. So I pulled 100 CM shards. Now, up to that point, I had only pulled five out of Milestone Orb, so I was never going to unlock this chick. Uh, that's it. I unlocked... CM. Look, at, it's done. You know, she's unlocked. Um, and that was great too because 
now characters started coming together. I was like, well, CM is a great character in the early, mid, and some of the late game. There's no reason not to work on her. And you'll notice that characters like the S.H.I.E.L.D. minions, Punisher, Spider-Man hasn't changed in four weeks, you know? Uh, getting a couple more shards on Shocker here or there and everybody, that's fine. But Green Goblin, you know, Thanos was unlocked through something. I think they did a quick little event for him or a campaign, which was great. But at no point in time did I intend on using Thanos uh, early. He doesn't actually do anything early, so I knew to avoid that uh, thing. Toad was added to some event. Maybe it was a Blitz or a campaign. I don't actually particularly recall. Uh, but Toad was unlocked. You're seeing I'm getting more and more characters. Here's a Mystique. Don't know how I got her. Doesn't really matter. Here's a Pyro, arbitrary event, um, and and Sabertooth. So like, oh wow, there's the mutants I'm gonna start needing for a Brotherhood team. Like, keep that in mind. This was with very little effort, and this is to show that, you know, just through playing the game, you're gonna make a little bit of progress towards goals. So just keep in mind when it's time to like shift gear and move to that goal. So you notice right now I'm working on Sinister Six, but now I have kind of an eye out for the uh, mutants, specifically the X-Men and the Brotherhood, that I might need in order to unlock Magneto one day. Not a priority, just eventually you want every legendary because they're all that powerful, so you move on. You know, some small things are happening, like Thor is about to be unlocked, Killmonger, decent characters, Vulture, uh, he's now my target farm in the arena store, or I'm actually kind of split farming him and Drax, which, again, kind of wish I didn't we'll talk about why in a minute, but, eh, it, it, that actually didn't make too much of a difference, but it might in the future as we get up to our current information. Uh, week six, really simple, work on the characters I have, continue to progress and unlock more and more characters, and every week from this point on, you'll see a handful of extra characters becoming unlocked every week. So week seven now, Ah, when I figured out the technology involved in showing my chat on the stream, that was great. Uh, so week seven, you see I started working on Captain Marvel. Unfortunately, Miles was also bio, and I got him a little bit earlier, so I was working on that. Groot's almost five star. Uh, Yondu's a little bit further away, not a big deal. Drax is five star, so I'm kind of like, I don't really need to work on Drax anymore, right? Uh, Hela is getting random shards here and there from, you know, basic orbs and stuff. She might be four star one day. But the core of the team is now coming together. Like, you're starting to see, what's your team? Well, it's Groot, CM, Minerva, Hela, Yondu or Drax, depending on what the fight is. It actually was Yondu for this. And my arena team was Miles, CM, Groot, Hela, Yondu. That was my the arena offense team I was using. And I was holding, like I said, top 500 plus... To go on i would replace miles with drax on defense tiny tiny little note i had there um but this is another week past small little growth you're not seeing a lot of growth i'm putting a little bit of points into ms marvel she's another bio character i figure i'd love to use her with cm but that's too much you know uh thanos still unlocked still untouched from last week green goblin whatever rhino whatever but these guys are getting farmed with extra energy and that's all it's happening because i want to make sure i can get iw or shuri my goal at this point is to build a, a, a dd2 team of star lord minerva invisible woman plus two other characters at this time the two other characters were like hella and cm for the argument i didn't want to bring in cm but those are fine because those core three the star lord minerva iw that team's strong enough you know, like, as characters you can work on at the beginning of the game and get well before the time you're level 70 and can even enter Dark Dimension 2, as characters that are one of, uh, you know, two tech, one bio, and then it would be a mystic and maybe a skill or whatever you had left over, you should probably be able to put together a really solid run because just those three characters uh, can auto Dark Dimension 3 at higher investment, which kind of shows that they have the power they just need a little bit of support through maybe another healer or a tank or something like that. So that core of the team was what I was working towards. Uh, and that's why it was really important that I get characters like Rhino and Green Goblin up to uh, five star relatively quickly. So I, I was pivoting a little bit, but you'll notice that my characters are still getting strong. Most importantly, this is where the, the difference comes in. I was accomplishing the tasks. I was doing my my raids, you know, I was I was completing my lane of raids. I wasn't getting kicked out of my lines. I was doing a couple of different war attacks, only two or three, but realistically not many other people were doing more than two or three at my power level because most people only had one team. I had 
you know, two completely unique different teams at like about 40 to 50k, I could beat up shield minions relatively easily. Some people just didn't have that roster or they had to split up a full team, maybe, whatever. Um, so that was what I did for week seven. Now we're going into the two month video uh, and it says so close to over because we are almost done farming for Star-Lord, or so I thought. This is where I make, I think the next video is where you're gonna see I made the first mistake, which was a decision based exclusively on greed and flexing that I did not need to make. So the week eight recap, surprise, CM, Hella, Spider-Miles, Minerva, all got stronger. Group got a little stronger. He's, he's five star, right, for the argument, like he's, 30 shards away, we have a month to go before Star Wars was supposed to come, this is relevant. Um, Yandu is a little bit less than 100 shards away for a month, so I'm starting to pivot and Ravager Bruiser is starting to scare me. You know what I mean? Like Ravager Bruiser is now starting to terrify me because I'm trying to be like, well, what do I do? You'll notice I moved Drax off of the favorites because I didn't need to worry about it, but I put Shocker in. This was the first good decision and the last good decision I made regarding my roster in like maybe a month or so from this time. And you'll see why because of a, an issue that we'll talk about. But uh, as we kind of look through, God, I'm so much bigger behind me. This looks so dumb. Whatever, at least I muted it. You don't have to hear me twice. You know, Thor got unlocked. Great, wonderful characters. Um, Mantis, Mantis just got unlocked or just got a stars because I was using Blitz Orbs. So this is the point one month to go before Star Wars was supposed to come that I exclusively target farmed Mantis in the Blitz store. Didn't matter. Wasn't split farming. Like, and Gamora not even unlocked yet. You know, she's like 42 of 100 shards. So this is the RNG that hurt me. And this could have really hurt me getting a Star Lord, not target farming her. And as a result, my advice to everybody uh, from this point is if there's a character in the store that you need, target farm them. If it's in the raid store, check the store. If they're not in the store, then go open one raid orb and see if you get lucky. But nine character shards of, or is it nine, seven? Yeah, nine character shards of random raid store characters is not better than five Mysterio shards when your purpose is unlocking, you know, IW or Shuri. Nine hand sentry shards or, or two, four hand sentry shards is not as good as five saber tooth shards when you're pushing towards Magneto uh, or Ronin if you're pushing towards Phoenix. You know, like just because you get more of something doesn't mean it's better. More kicks in the face is not better than less kicks in the face. It needs to have a purpose. Every shard has meaning in this game, and the only shards that, that mean anything to you is the shard that ranks you up a star. So, yes, there's great things that have been happening. I've unlocked a whole bunch of random characters through random orbs, but between premium orbs, basic orbs, milestone orbs, you get plenty of random shards in this game. So don't add RNG to a game where you're specifically supposed to work towards teams to unlock better versions of teams you're just gonna hurt yourself in the long run. Um, but we finally did get Mantis, we're target farming her. Uh, that's pretty much it for this week's event. It, nothing crazy happened. Uh, just kind of show up here, like a Psylocke is almost done, Blob is almost done. I'm not really farming it, I'm just showing like the mutants that I have, like, hey, this is a note, Wolverine's always done, you know? Maybe I'll start farming Psylocke a little bit. Mystique, she's a node farm, maybe I'll, I'll start getting enough energy to farm her. Toad, he's gonna go to the Blitz store, we just found out at this point. Maybe I'll start buying him after I finish Rhino, that kind of thing. Or Mantis, and then Rhino, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I did, actually, but that's pretty much it. And we, this is where we started talking, if you check it out, uh, is where we started talking about where we're going. Like, hey, when are you gonna start farming Juggernaut? I'm like, after I, you know, finish Vulture, we'll move to Juggernaut. And after that, I'll move to Heimdall. This way, the arena store kind of kept pace with the legendaries. Like, the first legendary I wanted was Star Wars, so I farmed Drac. The second legendaries, I wanted were IW and Shuri, so I farmed Vulture. The third I wanted was Magneto because he's easier to get than um, Black Bolt at the time, unless I was willing to spend money, which I can't. It's a free-to-play account. So I was like, I'm not gonna farm Heimdall now. It only takes you like, a, what, 60 days or so, and that's only buying once a day 
to get a five star version of any character in the arena store and i definitely was have had enough credits in the bank that i didn't really worry about it so no i would just buy the characters i needed for the legendary once they got to five star i moved on to the next one so like right now i'm working on heimdo and he's going to be done then i'll probably work on like mordo or something we'll figure that out later but that's it two weeks played uh most of the characters are ready we're running into a little bit of a of a tightness issue when it comes to ravager bruiser um and i actually am about to start spending war credits for the first time i think in like a week or so we'll see as we go to week nine so we're in week nine i'm just showing off the sinister roster like i was able to farm a decent amount of mysterio um you know green goblin he's gonna be three star shocker's almost gonna be three star vultures three star rhinos two can't really worry about blitz orbs really right now um and that was just kind of talking about what i was going to do now that i know for a fact i was within shooting distance or spitting distance of star Wars. now within a week we find out that the star Wars event is actually pushed back um that's where i get the brilliant idea hey what if i tried to get a six star star Wars on first pass which wasn't necessarily a bad idea because i didn't miss out on a six star star Wars by uh, a ridiculous amount i actually missed it by uh three character i'm uh, sorry four shards and the reason i couldn't get those last four shards is i was actually on a plane at the time it's a week i think week 11 or 12 is when it shows up um if you want to check that particular video out but yeah it was like i was on a plane uh and i landed and the event ended by the time i actually had internet access uh, so because i was delayed so i tried my best i didn't succeed uh, to get a six star character i was ultimately to do dark dimension one which ended up being better because i didn't need to do dark dimension one like all my characters are kind of ready for dark dimension two right now i have all the gear because i've been farming it and saving for it and making sure i buy it in the store when i hit level 60 and as you can see i'm level 60. you know all my characters are level 60. no one is past level 60 because that's where i am um cm nothing really changed as far as the characters they all kind of stayed the same the reason they stayed the same is because they didn't need to grow at this point so i started working a little bit more now ravager bruiser got a little bit lucky ravager bruiser is now almost going to be four star so i need that last 130. grew again he's done but a lot of people were saying in chat you'll see every now and then you know you got a free Groot. that's kind of unfair so that's where i make the decision you know what i'm going to farm an extra 100 Groot shards to prove that i had the time now did i need to do that no, of course not. I could have just been like, life's not fair and, you know, tell you to move on. But I wanted to show that it was very reasonable to get the amount of shards. Clearly, it had to be reasonable to get the amount of shards as I'm going to get other characters like Yondu and Ravager Bruiser in a meaningful amount of time. Um, that 100 shards helped, but it wasn't like make or break for me. And because of that, I made the mistake of trying to push for a six star. And the reason it was a mistake was not because I cared to get him. It was more of an issue of losing out on farming key characters. I would have had more legendaries at the time, but we'll get into that as we go. Um, but as far as the rest of my roster, Drax is done. Mantis is almost four star. You know, it's going to run through really quickly. Pause at your own need. But that's pretty much it. You're noticing here's my alliance rate. I just want to kind of show you where I am. This is a gamma two, you know, nothing crazy going on here. We're trying our best. In the title of this video is The Stalling Has Begun because I might be able to win a fight here or there. You might have noticed I wasn't doing, uh, what was the Ultimus? I think it was Ultimus 4, if I check real quick, because I don't remember where it was at that time. Oh, wait. Oh, like, you, you, we were doing fine with U5 enough to get enough materials to move on. But week 9 was just kind of recognizing that, uh, hey, I could totally push for a high star Star Wars and kind of move on from there. Now we go to week 10. So now we're in week 10, right? Great. Wonderful. Um, let's see what we got. We got Hela. She's her, she got her fourth star because I pulled five of her out of some arbitrary orb. Groot's at five. Yondu's at four and almost five. Shocker's still being farmed somewhat. Ravager Bruiser needs 100 shards. This is the five star unlock. We have about two weeks before Star Wars comes back. Give or take. We'll call it maybe... 16 days so i have 16 days to get all the rest of the shards i need absolutely no problem we are fine you know cm is getting an investment thor i bring thor up a little bit because i'm gonna try to use thor and hella this wasn't something that i needed to do uh and in retrospect i probably shouldn't have done it but it was gonna happen eventually so i did kind of want to iron out 
the a couple of different teams specifically because I knew when I got Star Wars that's one team uh, I wanted to have a second team and like Minerva Captain Marvel Thor Hela and eventually like Loki was probably close to the team I wanted to use so we're just gonna apparently sit here so one step down though you'll notice I've unlocked Symbiote Spider-Man now this is the beginning of like, the second milestone or something like that so I did get Symbiote Spider-Man uh, and immediately started working on it. At this point, I realized, man, all the bio characters I need are really close. Mantis, you'll notice she's close to five stars, so that's pretty much the entirety of all the characters I care about. Um, pretty ready to go for Star Wars. I'm basically off Star Wars now. He's just kind of a thing I'm doing. I'm, I'm expecting that on double drop day, um, any cores I have saved are going to be re reasonable for that. But now I got Symbiote Spider-Man, so I'm like, well, gotta use him. He's one of the best characters in the game, and I'm not wrong. So it's going to take me a little bit to get on him, considering all my bio gear has been spent already. But I'm kind of looking out for certain things, like the eventual unlock of Loki to pair with CM and, and Hela. A whole bunch of extra stuff going on. Week 10 was a very small setup, but it even says real team assembled. That's because I ended up getting Symbiote Spider-Man. Um, he was a priority for me, just kind of like how Emma right now is a priority for a lot of players. Because she's that good an overall character that she could help in like harder raids or arena kind of whatever you need so you know you work on them you get your real characters now you have a, a functional both arena and blitz and war and raid team and you're just kind of rolling in now this is kind of what everybody is saying right when they're like build build like one team except the difference is the team that i've been able to assemble through uh, knowledge about the game and working towards good goals and recognizing which characters are there will kick the piss out of the defenders because the defenders aren't a good team. So you can use the defenders or you can kind of lean into the value of good characters over time and and work on that. Now, if I hadn't gotten any of these characters, you know, if I hadn't gotten Captain Marvel, if I hadn't gotten Spider-Man, if I hadn't gotten Hela, um, I'd be in the exact same situation of all the other players in the game who didn't get that in my arena shard or in my, my level. So with arena, nothing would have changed, you know? But also, if we're having a conversation of all of the characters I didn't get, what if I had immediately unlocked all five-star versions of the Asgardians, you know? Like, what if that happened? Or you, you can't say, like, one thing set aside everyone's accounts. Like, I don't think I was particularly lucky or unlucky, um, more so than anybody else starting. I just w wish that, like, maybe things had gone a little bit different. I think uh we all get positives and negatives and it's really just about what you make out of it when it comes to the roster but week 10 real simple characters are there as you see i'm going to start progressing but you're going to start noticing i'm going to work on characters i shouldn't be when we go into week 11. so week 11 uh groot's done so i i'm i'm continuing to try to farm him to prove this point shouldn't have done it should just let people say whatever they wanted to say i know for a fact at this point you guys have been watching at least this video long enough to know that you like you trust what I'm saying. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Um, so Groot, I should have just stopped working on him and, and put Green Goblin onto the list immediately. Didn't do that. Or maybe I should have spent a little bit of, of the cores or energy on making sure Ravager Bruiser was set up. Ended up not mattering. He was fine. Um, Hell is ready. CM is ready. Miles is ready. CB Spider-Man went up 7k. My team is ready. Um, no real notes when it comes to what these guys are doing. Right? This is the opening team. I'm responding to chat. I'm talking to a bunch of people about stuff. Um, and then we look at you know, uh, some other characters on the roster. We can start looking a little bit closer to the other Sinister Six. I think my Vulture at this point is relatively close. Uh, okay, Vulture's three star, so I'm farming him every day. Uh, Rhino and Green Goblin, I'm not really farming. I got Green Goblin a three. I was like, I can leave him there. Kind of a mistake if I had stopped farming towards you know, a six-star Star Lord, or if I'd stop farming that Gru, I'd definitely be working on Green Goblin. Mysterio, I'm trying real hard to unlock. I get a little bit lucky with Mysterio uh, later. Turns out it didn't actually matter because of Shocker and Green Goblin, but it it mattered. It just didn't matter as much um, as we kind of move on. Uh, you'll notice the title of this one is The Last Week Grind and the Talk on Blitz. So this was the idea that I wanted to show everybody that within 90 days of gameplay, from the start of the game, 90 days is roughly one cycle of Star Wars, you know, from 90 days, you can have enough to unlock Star Wars. Um, that was the goal. And it was just under 90 days, obviously. 12 times 7 is not 90. It's a little bit shorter. Um, but 
it, you know, I just wanted to show that, like, if this is what you want to do in 30 days, you can have any team at five star. And that's from the beginning of the game when you don't have resources. It obviously becomes easier as you work on the right characters and move on. You can get them in significantly less time. But you're always one cycle away from whatever legendary you want. If you start working on that legendary, a lot of people make the mistake of like, well, I missed Star Lord this pass, so I'm just going to work on the next legendary. And then you end up chasing a legendary, which is going to either frustrate you, force you to buy, or just keep you behind the eight ball. It doesn't matter what the right, like what you want to do um, in the moment, you have to have a plan. So for me, it was Star Lord. I'm not going to say it again. You know what my plan was, right? So that was my plan. Whatever your plan is, it might be different. Stick to it. Because if you don't stick to your plan, when you start pivoting too much or too hard, you end up in situations where you're not getting anything you want. And that's not a great goal. And that's something the lesson you kind of learn as we go on uh, to week 12. And I'll let it play. Week 12, this is 84 days. So I technically have six days before the Star Wars event would be back normally. Uh, Groot's done. Yondu's five shards away. Ravager Bruiser is 116 of 130. I'm going to pause it so it doesn't move from there. Uh, that means that they're done, right? Like, there's no way I'm getting zero Yondu and zero Ravager Bruiser shards over the X days with a calendar that would take um, for us to get Star Wars. So they're done. Now I'm off them. I'm level 62, you can tell because of Symbiote Spider-Man and, and Captain Marvel. They're up there. Um, Minerva, whatever. Like, my team's together. You know, like, this is my raid team. It's Symbiote Spider-Man, Miles, Captain Marvel, Hela, Minerva. Sometimes I put in Groot. Sometimes I put in Thor. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Because my raid team is good. Because we're doing U5s right now, and I'm doing it. Now, if I move to a U6, maybe I have to invest more into them. But I'm not in charge of my alliance, so I don't have to make that call. They do. So we'll move on. Um, and... Now that we're moving down, you notice Loki was unlocked. I think it was unlocked last week, and I just started working on him. Uh, Loki's part of my arena team comp. Um, now he and CM, Hela, Symbiote Spider-Man, and I think Minerva? No, it's Miles. I think that's still the team to this day I'm using, because at like 158k power, they're still beating Asgardians and beating AIM. Well, actually, we don't see AIM as high up in the arena as I am usually now, so like it doesn't really matter. Um, but they, they have fallen off their just not there anymore. Thanos, you'll notice, not touched. Green Goblin, not touched. Like, Mantis, she's almost done. You'll notice Drax, I'm split farming him and Vulture just to get him to six stars. So I could be like, eventually. Now, for my money, I was like, I'm gonna eventually need the Guardians at six stars so I can do Dark Dimension 1 with the Guardians, right? That was my thought process. That was my train of thought. Um, what I'd never really thought about was like, don't worry about it, just do Dark Dimension 1 with, uh, with Ultron, the Ultron you're going to get, and then the rest of the characters you just happen to have at six star. And I'm like, that's fair. Ultron will carry me through that. Never really thought to that. Wanted to use the Guardians and move on. Um, and again, I wouldn't have had enough time to do that in uh, 90 days, but in 180 days or six months plus or so, uh, I definitely would have had enough time. You know what I mean? Like in six months, I would have had enough time to do Dark Dimension 1 and Dark Dimension 2 as we're in the seven month video right now. And I'm just under level 70. Uh, 69 and like two thirds or a third or something like that. You'll see that that's kind of the deal. So my roster's coming along just fine. Um, my 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 goals are still fine. Again, have not spent a single arena credit. Every war credit, sorry, war credit. Every war credit is just mine. I j it's like I took it, I put it in the bank, and I walked away. I've exclusively been opening gold orbs from the war store, and now that I'm level 60 plus. I think, or, or, or somewhere around here, is where I started being able to see gold gear in, like, everything. Not just, like, the raid store or, or you know, like, I think it was like some stores had it and some stores didn't. So now I'm starting to look at gold gear, or orange gear, rather, and be like, hmm, I do kind of need this orange piece for, for this. Or like, oh, man, this is something I'm going to need for uh, gear tier 13 Star Wars, gear tier 13 Minerva, the symbiote spider-man you know the characters i know for a fact i'm gonna work on one thing you will know is that like i don't have carnage yet and i'm not starting to farm him because it doesn't it doesn't matter eventually i'll get carnage i don't need him at high star he's a passive that makes symbiote spider-man better so eventually i'll get everybody you know that's not a big deal but carnage is not necessary for my plan of unlocking multiple legendaries carnage is taking a resource that 
I, I've been banking, but I don't have that much of, and I'm gonna just quickly scan to see if I can show off my arena resources. This was just a quick thing I wanted to show you how, like, at any point in time, anyone willing to spend, like, $29.99 is pretty much getting, uh, like, it's immediately unlocking a, a, a character. So, like, I was just kind of showcasing that the free-to-play is, is so pigeonholed when it compares to, like, someone who's willing to just throw a couple bucks here to solve a problem immediately. Like, I could have bought this offer, right, for 30 bucks, uh, what, a half, star and a half ago on Yondu, and then started farming somebody else. It, it, it's just crazy, um, the amount of value uh, you, you could get from spending key money on key things in this game. The one thing I'm trying to scan through right here, um, there's nothing really of note down here. So let's see what my arena rank is. Yeah, 274 in arena. These are the power of the Asgardian teams I'm beating the piss out of all the time. Um, hey, look, it's a defender. It's good to see them around. Uh, none of the, like, the, this is, this is my range. You know what I mean? I'm 274. This is 250. Like, I'm 121. These guys worked on, on, on teams that they either bought or, I mean, most of these were farmed. Uh, I would imagine... No, this guy could have been lucky. Some of these guys could be there. But, like, farming Sif and Heimdall, what did that do for them? Is this an arena team? It's not. It's not. You can't farm Hela. You can't farm Loki. If you buy them, sure, you put together. But even then, some guy with just the free characters that everybody in this game that you see here also got. Arena Shard. It didn't work out. So I'm not really worried about that. What is this? This is, uh, I think, a, a raid fight. I just wanted to show off three months into the game... Oh no, this is probably just me beating up another uh, Avenger. Here's War. You know, I can't do much when it comes to teams, but I can fight one or two big teams now because I have one or two multi-comp options. Now I'm one of five. We're, we're pushing ourselves a little bit on this. I wanted to see if I can show off the arena store real quick. I might not have uh, reached there. Uh, and more importantly, now I'm kind of coming into my own on Blitz uh, as we go on. Oh wait, nope. Nothing here of note. Okay, so week 12 is done. This is three months of play. Uh, we are at week 12. Um, we are six days away from when Star Wars should be around, give or take, but I'm close enough that if I needed to, you'll notice I have cores that I've been spending to to kind of move through stuff in this game. I have, uh, you know, I have infinite Blitz charges because I never spend them because I don't care about Blitz. I'm putting together uh, random amounts of teams, but like basically I'm saving my cores to double drop specific characters and I was able to get enough character shards to guarantee the five star um, for this event. Now we're going to week 13. This is where we find out that like, well, Star Wars is most likely not going to be back for another until like 120 days on the cycle, basically an extra month. So with that thought of having an extra month in my mind, I'm like, well, I could just push for a six star, right? It's totally going to be easy to get all of the shards I need, especially since like I'm already getting Groot every day and I'm already, Drax is almost done. Uh, why not farm Yondu and Ravager Bruiser? Like, yes, if you're thinking, Tony, you're an idiot. Trust me, I know, I was there, I live with me. I know I'm an idiot. So that was a mistake that I shouldn't have made. So now we are seven days past, right? Ravager Bruiser, uh, we found out Star Wars not coming, so I just stopped. Like, I'm one shard away. Like, I'll unlock it whenever, you know? Uh, Shocker, Green Goblin, Rhino, Mysterio, and Vulture are all three star. Like, uh, at least Vulture is going to be five, no problem, because he's getting bought once a day. My top team, you know, is built around the strength of the characters I have at, at the level I have them. So that's not really causing any problems. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, Groot has now fallen off. I'm not favored anymore. But I am 89 of 100 shards to kind of show, like, no, look, I, I got my Groot up there. Yondu, I stopped him completely, which was a smart decision. I should have kept doing that. Uh, and then you see the drop, right? After this, you start seeing a wave of 10k characters, uh, and then they just get worse and worse as time progresses. Uh, I'm only working on the characters that are most important, which is going tall, but I'm going wide in terms of having access to multiple characters. So I'm not just, not every energy I have is going into Hela. You'll notice all these green dots around Hela. Like, yeah, of course I could put them in there, but that costs gold that I might want to spend on uh, starring up Green Goblin or, or powering up Rhino or whatever, 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 whatever. 
You know, um, they might be a, a specific piece that overlaps or, or purple ability material that I know I need. And besides, my hell is 30k and she's doing her job. They're all gear tier 9 or 10. They're going to be fine. So I'm one week in, Star Wars done, right? This is where I start talking about the Sinister Six, but I do kind of flex a little bit and, and start working on getting a six-star version of Star Wars. That was a mistake. Shouldn't have done that. Now... Uh, if there's one question up here asked by somebody, if you read it right up there, it says, What should people farm from War Store, Sif, Pyro, or Gear? Uh, the answer to that question is Gear. You should farm Gear from the War Store. You get more Gear for your War Credits than you do in any other situation. I get it. Sif unlocks a Legendary. That's true. You're not wrong. You will not get that Legendary. You won't get that Legendary in without spending money. Keep in mind. Without spending money, you won't get that Legendary. So if you start farming Sif early, what you're saying is... I either want a useless character, or not useless, but a subpar character, uh, until I could farm Hela and Loki to 5 star, or I'm going to spend money at the time that it comes up so I can have whatever it takes to get Black Bull. Which is a totally justifiable agreement, but you need to know that you're pot committing to that when you farm Sif early, because eventually you could just always farm Sif. I unlock Sif completely by accident in my version of the game because I just got her from random stuff. Um, but that's it. So we're week 13 in. Um, we're ready. You know, like, we're super ready for Star Wars. Um, I've been moving towards uh, Invisible Woman. What I wish I did was keep doing this. What I didn't do was keep doing this. And we'll kind of see as I pivot into week 14. Oh, God. I even titled it Six Star Star Wars because I'm an idiot. Because I'm like, well, I'm already halfway to Groot. What's another... 200 character shards of Ravager, Bruiser, and Yondu. So I've already broken the first Cardinal Sin, which is focus five. You should never have more than five characters favorited. Six if, like, one of them is, you know, like, just there or you're remembering. So, like, hey, I have to, like, farm this from a store. Like, it doesn't matter if you put a store farmable character in there. But, like, like, like Rhino technically doesn't count, right? Mysterio doesn't count. Vulture doesn't count. But uh, there's too many things. Like, I'm focusing on too many things right here. I have, like, oh, man, what if I get this Yondu and this Ravager Bruiser and this group, like, in the next uh, X amount of time? And, yeah, you know what? I was close. I was close enough that if I didn't fly out that day, I would have had a six-star Star Wars. And you know what that would have done for me? Nothing. Nothing different than my five-star isn't doing. You know, like, I, I still don't have Rocket at six. Maybe I would have tried a little bit harder to get him. But, like, if I don't have Rocket, I'm not doing Dark Dimension 1. And my Star Wars ready for Dark Dimension 2. So this was a mistake. I regret it. I advise everybody, unless you're willing to spend money, don't worry about six-starring any legendary character on the first pass. It's completely irrelevant. Actually, even like on their second pass, as I wouldn't start worrying about starring up legendary characters until you have most of the legendary characters, you know what I mean? And like once you unlock Phoenix, that's when you can start considering, hmm, maybe the other one should be six star too, but that's I'm not going to go into too much preachy detail about that. Um, as for this roster line, you know, I think I even brought up later in this uh, video as it gets there that, like, I'm 29 of 55 on a three-star of Sif and I didn't buy her once. And then you can watch the video and you can track to see that, like, my amount of arena credit, I mean, my war store credits just keep going up because that's just what I did. And look, Karnak, somehow he got unlocked, that jerk. Um... There's Luke Cage still at the bottom of the roster. You know, like, it's kind of the, the meme. You'll notice every character is immediately brought to level 20. That's to make them usable in Blitz. Um, I haven't shown you guys a lot of that recently, so I wanted to show you, like, what the bottom of my roster looks like. Like, yeah, look, I have Rescue. Um, I don't care. Aim Infector. Useless. Um, Ravager Stitcher. Garbage. Cree Oracle. Don't need him. You know, like, these characters don't work. Vision. Great character. Don't need him for anything. My team is great, and I'm using tech gear. Don't worry about it. Aim Security. Yeah, one day I'm going to work on aim security. That day and today, and it's definitely not tomorrow. So, not worried about that. You just want to know which characters are worth investment in early. Um, or just, like, whatever your plan is. Like I said, stick to it. That should be fine. I made a mistake. I pivoted. This is a hard pivot. This isn't the difference between, like, fine, I'll farm another three days in a character. This is, like, literally saying, like, I'm going to farm for the next month of these idiots. And that month of farming definitely hurt me uh, where it could have been on something a little bit better. Now, week 15, I titled it, I love the difficulty slider, and that's 100% accurate. I do, because we started doing U6, and the difficulty slider made a difference. Uh, I'm still farming the idiots, because I'm still an idiot. Uh, Hella, Spider-Man, nothing's changed there. Shocker and Green Goblin are both almost 4-star. They're coming along fine. We are ready 
for them. You know, we are we are okay with them um, and how they're going to work out. Uh, as for my rest of my roster, you know, it, it's kind of difficult to determine where I should be, where my best value is now. Here we are doing a U6 difficulty 4, uh, and I am holding my weight. Uh, you don't see me in the top 7. Uh, you might see me if I decide to scroll. I don't remember what I did in this video, but I'm sure if you watch the video, you'll see me do the fights. Um, I'm I'm holding my own with people who are putting up 7.5 on a difficulty 4 U6. You know what I mean? Like, that. that's it. There's no other way to kind of uh, spin that is I didn't work on a meta team. I didn't work on the defenders or the Asgardians. I worked on key good characters, put them together, and now because of, of my knowledge of what to do and how to do it, uh, and because I, I followed good advice, which was my own and the advice of other people who I was talking to throughout this time, I was able to uh, actually like compete with people putting up seven and six million points with way higher TCPs than I had, that kind of thing. But th this was a, a very short week. Nothing else happened uh, for the next couple of weeks. It's just this, so we go to 16. So we go to 16, apparently I have a Mega Orb to open. I figured I'd put this on here because I don't remember what this Mega Orb was. So we're about to find out if it mattered or not. It's 50 Loki Shards, this is an amazing Mega Orb. Um, really helps me progress. I think at this point uh, in chat, I actually say, Man, I wish it was somebody else. I don't remember who I said. And then people were like, what are you talking about? Uh, um, oh yeah, I think it was Man, like um, we were talking about, I wanted, I needed Mantis or something like that, right? Um, and they're like, what do you mean? 50 Loki shards is 100% better than 50 Mantis shards. And I'm like, well, that's not true because right now 50 Mantis shards guarantees me, uh, you know, a Star Lord or something like that. Um, where 50 uh, Loki shards doesn't actually matter. So I was, um, you know, like the, the argument is yes, inherently, and it, it, we were talking about Hela too, uh, inherently, this is the biggest confusion and it keeps coming up. So that's why I keep reiterating it. People think that like shards matter and the only shard that matters is the one that finishes the character. Sure, a little bit of progress is great, but if I'm... Now someone's like, you almost got a 5-star Hela from no farming and I haven't even unlocked her. But yes, but almost a 5-star Hela doesn't matter for what I need Hela for, which is to unlock Black Bull. She needs to be a 5-star Hela. So for me, um, if I had pulled 100 Hela shards, uh, it would have been great because I would have two shards away from unlocking Hela, which means I would have unlocked her with the calendar, but I still wasn't like sure that I can get the rest of the characters in time for Black Bolt, especially because of the way this was going. Um, that's pretty much it. So uh, I just wanted to show off that because that was a relevant thing that I remember from this week. But this is week 16. This is the four month video, you know? Um, again, you're noticing characters are just getting whatever you can. You know, like as, as much progress as I can. Now Groot, I keep farming these idiots, I keep regretting it, but I'm also making progress on Shocker and Green Goblin. I'm just not making the kind of progress I should have as my Ravager Bruiser and my Yondu are so close. I've also been spending a little bit more cores refreshing, uh, not necessarily nodes, but for energy that I was before. So I'm like keeping a very low core count this entire time, which also ended up hurting me in the long run because I didn't have enough to hit like the double drops for IW as hard as I wanted to. Weeks, so the last, like I said, the, the, this, the last two weeks, this week, basically this month from like the 13th to the 17th was really like a mistake that I was too stubborn to admit. And that's something that's incredibly important. Like don't stick to uh, a mistake because you spent a lot of time making it, you know? Um, week 17, I guess I skipped for some reason. Hey, it's bald me right behind. Um, this is the, the point where I'm like, all right, so I got Star Lord. Um, uh, week 17, I guess I missed that one. It's really not incredibly relevant, uh, but that's because that's when the event came around, right? Like, I couldn't do anything about that. Uh, Green Goblin is almost where he needs to be. Uh, Shocker is almost where he needs to be, but because I spent so much time pushing for a six-star Star Lord, and if I could scroll down on this and, and kind of show off uh, that the characters were, like, close to star level, obviously you're not going to see Bruiser, um, you would have noticed that, like, 
you know, I had the characters. I just got it like an hour after because of the time zone sh uh, shift from everything I was doing. Um, it, it was, it was a weird flex that I shouldn't have done. You know, like I had the Star Lord, got him up. My team is is done. I started working on Thanos in an attempt to put together some kind of BKT team. Didn't need to. Kind of a mistake. Didn't really matter because that Mystic Gear doesn't really have a home right now. Um, but I was like, sure, maybe I'll use the BKT. That was me, again, kind of being like, well, the BKT is a good team and I kind of want to show how good it is to people without realizing, like, I don't have to. So that was a little bit more content creator, Tony, than anything else. Now, here's my Carnage. He's unlocked. He's three stars. Haven't farmed him once. So that's great. There's Yondu exactly 10 shards away. That's how much I missed Star Wars by, by the way. That exact amount. And I could have farmed him uh, because I had cores uh, to do it. And I couldn't. Bruiser was done. Everyone was done. Um, and that was why I was super salty. Because now I knew I didn't have enough time to double and triple farm. Or cores to double and triple farm. The two remaining, like Rhino, he's basically done, right? Vulture was definitely done. Mysterio was completed through, I don't remember what or how. I think I pulled a Mega Orb and got 50 Mysterio, and it was like the best thing that could have possibly happened. But I definitely didn't have enough to pull the 130 and then 130, you know, five shards I needed of these two idiots. Well, just 130 because I was going to get five for him um, from the calendar to get her. And that was where I was in trouble. So I knew I'd given up on, on Invisible Woman. So this title is called the Magneto Shift because I said, you know what? Let's shift to Magneto. But... I still kind of farmed Green Goblin and Shocker. So again, I was like, I'll farm them. Like, like I even called this video the Magneto Shift, and I didn't farm them because I was like, but maybe I could get her. Had I pot committed to the Magneto Shift, I would have had Magneto very clearly as I was just shy. I think it was like 25 total shards uh, off of, I, it was probably Storm if I had to guess at the time. Um, now I'm definitely getting Magneto on his next pass. No worries there. But... Uh, it, it's just an issue of making these kind of mistakes. You know, like I already kind of progressed through uh, Psylocke um, on her own, uh, and she was an easy farm every day, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. So this is where another mistake I had made, or this is me sticking to the mistake I made, which is like, you know what, just stick to what I'm doing, like, but also pivot. Like, no, I should have just sticked. Juggernaut became my daily farm. Mystique was uh, well on her way. Uh, I was thinking like, well, maybe I can get some more Sabretooth. Never going to farm Pyro. Don't worry about him. And then Toad was now in the Blitz store, so I could probably farm some extra Toad shards, right? That's in my head. Didn't work out that much, but these are the mistakes. This is the what we call the Dark Ages of this point. Uh, we recoup. Like, don't get me wrong. My raids are going great. My arenas are going fine. Uh, my wars are going fine. I still have a ton of resources. I'm on track. My characters are all level 65 because that's what level I am. Uh, I hit that point. Now we are in the long haul, and literally we are now at week 28. We are 10 weeks from this point, and I'm still not level 70. And I'm spending 600 energy a day, plus the free experience we get from random stuff, plus the free energy we get from random stuff. Like, it, it has taken almost two months, uh, I'm sorry, almost three months to go from uh, 65 to 70. Almost. Just about. 10 weeks. Maybe 11. You know? And that's that's a lot. No way to slice it. Uh, we're going to just kind of quickly look through the rest of the, uh, the time here. Uh, nothing major changes. This is still me being an idiot, obviously. Um, here I am. Oh, wait. Here's week 17. Ha ha ha. Skip that. Sorry, guys. Uh, late upload, but full of juicy developments. I don't know what the juicy developments were. This is probably just me testing out random teams for a raid. Let's see. Let's see how this works. What so we can see like, hey, what are you doing? This is me. I'm like, oh yeah, no, I gotta I'm gonna split farm Thanos' energy and give the most to Hella and apparently Greg, because this is a great decision. He was basically just here for death proof, so like at that point, like I had a strong group, why not use him? Um But there's nothing really going on here. I think this is where I was, I think this is part of the decision we ended up making, where we were just like, we are never doing this again, guys. We are never, under any circumstances, ever gonna use Thanos, and we just hard hard commit to never dealing with that. And this is like the second node in Ultimus U6 difficulty for. So I was having some difficult time struggles with that now, obviously not so much. Um, gonna quickly scan for 
gear. Obviously, I'm getting a, a decent drop of chunks of gear from whatever random raid orbs I'm, I'm getting through completing my daily tasks. Here we have made a full pivot to farming, um, you know, in uh, I don't know, Brotherhood slash X-Men. Uh, Juggernaut's on his way, no problems there. Uh, Storm, Psylocke, and Mystique. That was kind of a mistake. Uh, what I didn't want to do was farm Toad. What it should have done was farm Toad. Because I definitely had enough credits at the time bank from Blitzing uh, that I should have been able to farm Toad. Or maybe even Sabretooth. But um, it was it was like Mystique and Psylocke, they were pretty okay. They're both 5 star now. Juggernaut's 5. Obviously Wolverine is always 5 star. You can't avoid him. He's like the plague. Um, so I was like, I'll farm Storm because she takes energy. That was kind of a mistake. Um, as a free-to-play player, I should have known that spending uh, that much energy on character farms for Magneto was probably not the best option. Maybe going for Toad or pivoting into Blob, which was kind of worse, I think. Or maybe using some of my power cores to refresh the raid store to buy Sabretooth. Maybe buying Pyro wouldn't have been the worst idea, but... Um, Ultimately, choosing to note, choosing Storm as another character just split the amount of energy I was using to farm not just other characters, but like every energy I spent on Storm, I could have spent 50 cores and farmed more Psylocke, gotten her done faster, and moved on. It's just a lot. It's hard to farm three different character shards at a time. You, may, you guys probably know that if you've done it before, uh, especially from energy farms because they're very unreliable. Some days you may get eight or six, some days you get zero, and nowhere in between, um, and you never have any control, and the worst is when they happen, the zero days happen on double drop days, where you reset multiple times and get like four shards, absolutely the worst, um, but that's it, so now we go into the week 20 video, uh, five months played, obviously, I have 100 characters unlocked, this is where I start going into the details of Blitz, and what to do when you have 100 characters, uh, obviously Blitz system has changed, so I'm not going to go over that, um, you can watch a new video I've come out with somewhere around here regarding Blitz uh, whenever that comes up. But there's no real reason to, to kind of detail that out. Um, let's take a quick look at my progress going this far. So my Mutants, Mystique's 4, Storm is 3, Psylocke I think is 4, uh, and AIM. This is something I was talking about because this is where people start um, talking about uh, AIM, right? Uh, maybe about a week or two before this is when people were like, you could start with AIM as a team. And I was like, well, I don't think you can because Graviton is literally not farmable for like the first month plus of the game. Uh, and Scientist Supreme literally is completely unfarmable um, because you cannot do Cosmic unless you start working on the Guardians. So if you start working on the Guardians, the second team you can work on after you unlock Star-Lord is AIM. And that's totally reasonable. You don't have to do Sinister Six. I just think Sinister Six is better. And you can use the AIM team for pretty much whatever you want. You know, like, that that's fine. I don't think they're as good as everyone implies. I think they're just defenders with extra steps. Uh, that's what I've said, and I still stand by that. But I do enjoy using the AIM team. Um, they're just not, like, this all-encompassing monster of a team that people seem to believe they are. Uh, but this is showing that, like, I have not farmed a single one of them, and I have four of the seven unlocked. Uh... And now I have all of them, except I think I'm missing a couple shards on Graviton unlocked. So if I decided today, like, hey, I'm going to work on AIM, it would take me one week because I was strong enough, because I had good characters, because I'm in a good alliance, because I'm working really hard towards progressing on the right things. I can now bring up an entire team, 50k a week, maybe more, 50k in a couple of days, maybe more. I could bring up my entire AIM team. Uh, 50k power for the entire team. So this team right now, as you can see, like it's nothing, right? I could be like, and now they're a 50k team. And then next week, I'm like, and now they're a 100k team. And now I have a 100k version of that team. Because I worked out what it takes to get the most re rewards. Resources, this is, as everyone will always say, this is a resource management game. Because every game is a resource management game. So it's stupid to not get the most useful resources as quickly as possible and there's some ways to do it there's many different ways depending on what resource you think is valuable for me doing well in raids and war gives you the best resources because it gives you literally anything you need so for me i will always work on doing well in raids and war and you can't do well in war with one team and you can't do well in all of the raids with one team 
you might be able to do okay with one team, but you won't do well in all of the raids with one team, especially when you start talking about the Greek raids, which do matter. It's not just about be getting to U6 or U7. You do have to proceed in Greek raids, and you have to be meaningful. If you're the only person that can't do the Cree lane in a Gamma, you're the reason that your team is being held back. You know what I mean? So this is the point where I was starting to talk about aim. Uh, they're still fine. Like they're not wor they're not better or worse than the defenders. That's the truth. So you want to start with aim. You're welcome to it. You're gonna care more about arena, but be careful because you're gonna see a lot of people kind of hype up what they do with their aim, not necessarily talking about um, you know how good or bad aim could be. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. This is the five month played. Uh, nothing else crazy happened. Uh, Magneto is Nito. Um, this is where we were like pretty confident we were unlocking him. Uh, I don't remember exactly where things... Oh, yeah, I don't remember exactly where things went wrong for me on this one. But again, this was another situation where uh, had I not... So this is true. Had I not tried to farm that Star-Lord, I would have been done with Invisible Woman's Sinister Six farm. S not like at the wire well before the wire because we're talking about an extra month of farming that i could have had on those characters which means i would have had an extra month of farming the magneto uh team which means i would have been on curve uh the only thing that would have happened next is i still wouldn't have been able to unlock black bolt because all of that farming wouldn't have gotten me a higher level faster but it was going to make a pretty decent um chunk of value for me as we went on now um yeah like Juggernaut. Now, Shocker and Green Goblin are both four-star. Uh, Psylocke is is being stingy. I started uh, farming a little bit of Toad because it was easy to, to get to him uh, just in case, but man, this became rough. As far as my team goes, everything here is going just fine. Uh, nothing really to note there. Again, somehow someone always wants... This is like a week of people who wanted to troll me about AIM, um, or as I like to call them, wrongs. These are the wrongs of people. But they're like, hey, how are you going to proceed through these three nodes in the campaign without aim? No one ever talks about how they're going to proceed through the next three without a very specific mystic villain controller team, you know? Like, like oh yeah, 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 you worked aim. How are you going to farm Hella? Well, I'm just going to use... Oh, yeah, that's right. You're not. Like, I don't care about what it takes to progress through three campaign nodes. You're going to do them eventually, you know? Think about like all the other campaign nodes you did in Nexus, in Villains. How oh, man, how are you ever gonna reach Villain 7? Is It's probably not by investing in Electra and Crossbones, you know? You'll get through a couple in the early stages of Villains, but like those guys are not gonna carry you through. You're gonna wait till you get actually good characters, and then wow, this was totally worth investing in. I can't wait to use them, that kind of thing. Maybe the Sinister Six, who knows? It doesn't really matter though. Um, so week 21, simple. Moving on, we're fascinating. Too soon for Magneto. Now, this is where we got screwed on Magneto. Um, and this is true. I do take full responsibility for my mistake. Like, uh, my mistake of um, farming Star-Lord. At the same time, Magneto was literally like 15 days faster than he, his, he was supposed to be in the 30-day cycle. They literally skipped for Magneto. So... Magneto uh, came and I couldn't get to him and even if uh, we, I kept farming those characters just to make sure and they did get to the point where I'd be like I would have had him if it was another 10 days but Magneto was literally 10 days early threw everyone off if you guys don't remember so that's something that's also important to remember um, you, everything is best guess because Scopely I hate saying Scopely because they're not Foxnex, and Foxnex are the makers of this game, and no one changed, um, which is why we have the same problems. They're only as open as they care to be, you know? They, they are only as open as they care to be, which is why now we're getting people that are straight leaking stuff, um, uh, because Scopely is trying to figure out, well, how is this happening? It's like, well, if you told people uh, actual meaningful stuff, like, maybe every three months, you release a, uh, a roadmap that says, these are the characters you should look out for, and more, and you can leave like a couple of the speculation, like, you know, over the next three months, we'll have 13 characters come out. 10 of them are these. 
who are the other three and then you know just remove one from each patch that's hype building they just don't know how to generate hype and as a result of it we have this weak culture of just people now just going around and telling everybody like this is what's happening and and these are what their kits are and this is whether they had breast reduction surgery like a they just need to be better at telling people what to do. Unfortunately, when they give people information, people can plan and spend their money and time and energy effectively, and that makes them less money in the long run because they're not trying to make money based on the strength of the value of their game. They're trying to make money by tricking you. That's always been true, uh, and they've tricked me for quite a bit of money throughout this time. So this is the unfortunate side effect of Magneto. Again, this was clearly six weeks ago. This is a month and a half ago. Um, Nothing really knows. This is the conversation we've had about wide versus tall. I really don't have to go into too much detail, but you're seeing uh, I do a lot more blitzing in these videos now because my roster is wide enough that I'm constantly putting up um, all the milestones relatively easily, uh, and that's a huge deal. So I'm just pointing out that like Shocker and Green Goblin are the hard farms right now. These guys are done. Even Rhino, I don't really care for him. He's going to get unlocked when I you know get the calendar for it so these guys are the guys i'm just like i'm gonna get shuri i'm gonna have a great time i'll get iw when she comes back i'm off it now right and the reason i'm off it now is because if i check real quick i'm level 67 in my mind i'm like all i care about is getting to 70 and getting into stark dimension what do we got we got hello we got symbiote spider-man we got star Wars. we got minerva who's the fifth i don't know might be carnage might be cm haven't thought about it yet Still don't know who I'm going to bring in. Because I might unlock Yo-Yo. I might open a Mega Orb and get 100 Yo-Yo Shards. Uh, the Invisible Woman event might arbitrarily come back right in time for me to just bring her in. Like like the day before I hit level 70. It might be like, IW, unlock her. And I'll be like, great, thanks, bud. Appreciate it. Now I have IW and I can immediately bring her up. So I don't really know who is going to go up yet. And ultimately, I do have enough gear and resources that it's not going to hurt me in the long run. This is what I recognized at week 23, and this is where I started discussing the difference of wide and tall, and why my roster is uh, tall at points, but overall it's a wide roster, which is allowing me to do better in raids, better in war, than the average player. And which is why, at this point, I believe my TCP is about 700,000, and I'm putting up the same damage in raids as people with 2 million TCP, because I'm working on the right characters, not the team if that makes sense um i don't think there's much more this is the six month recap um i'm not going to go over the six month recap and the seventh month recap now we are now saying we are one month away from ultron right this is where we did the math out we figured out i'm level 69 uh this is how much energy i get a day this is how much time it's going to take i should get ultron i should be uh one month away from entering dark dimension 2 which is reasonable i have the gear it's just about getting the characters to level 70 which shouldn't be an issue so i'm kind of conserving resources just in case uh, i have four of the five ready to go no big deal and if you kind of like go through this is where the arena is going crazy like now I'm, I'm top 500 more reliably a lot of reasons why i'm this low is because people have unlocked the legendaries that i haven't there's invisible woman's up in the top of my roster there's magnetos up in the top of my rosters there's black bolts up in the top of my rosters now you know and i missed all of them so it's starting to yeah but you notice i'm, I'm like banking my cores i'm i'm spending my resources i'm making sure i have everything i need for all of the characters i need and even then if you start seeing now if I go to the war store, you'll start seeing, like, these are my war credits. I had, like, 50, 60,000 war credits. Now I'm spending them to make sure I have the resources. Because these resources are the most important resources in the game. Bar none. War credits give you 10 of each, like, material you buy. 10 purples. 10. Like, it gives you 5 character shards, but some of the characters are really worth farming. Like, eventually I might start farming... Sinister or Carnage from this store or Sif. Sif is a character I've been farming in this store, you know uh, Cable one day for Doc Ock. I don't know But the, the point is these like going immediately to Sif on this is just wasting your time on a character who doesn't matter now Why would you do that for a character that's mediocre? Um, when you can use that to build up more teams to get more war points anyway, you know, you're it, like I could buy Sif whenever I want. Some people just don't like to save. Some people just spend and like deplete their resources. Some people, when they see a red dot, they have to do it. That's designed that way. That's why the dots aren't green or yellow. That's why they're red. 
so that you go like, this is something I have to do. It's not. Hold it. Save it. Save your resources. If you want to call it a resource management game, manage your resources. Uh, uh, and then we are pretty much brought up to now <laughs> and a wave one team when the Avengers appear. Let's go real quick to my roster as of now. You'll notice Symbiote, Spider-Man, Star Wars, Hela, and Minerva are all gear tier 12. Um, that's it. I'm missing a handful of arbitrary pieces. A lot of these are purple pieces. Uh, what I'm missing to, to max out some of the characters. Uh, I don't know if all of them are. But a lot of these pieces are relatively easy to come by. Uh, I'm not particularly worried. It shouldn't be much longer than the day I hit level 70. But here I am, you know, trying my best to progress through level 70 as best as I can. Uh, there's not much I can do about it, but I try. As for everything else... You know, uh, I unlocked Shuri. You know, that happened. I, uh, I'm i ready for Invisible Woman, clearly, because I have Shuri unlocked. Uh, I, I'm i almost ready for Magneto on his next pass. For me, the only thing I care about now is Black Bolt, right? I can't farm Hell yet. Uh, I've been working a little bit more, and I'll kind of showcase my entire roster here. You'll notice jumps are still real. Like, here's Sif, right? She's almost five-star. Cool. Uh, Punisher... I used him a little bit for some challenges. Venom, thought a little bit about him. Juggernaut, he's fine. Ghost Rider. Here's Shuri. Why do I not invest in Shuri? I don't need her. I have Minerva. She's good enough for now. One day I'll need Shuri. That day is not today. Uh, aim characters, I'm starting to work on a little bit. Just to have them. As another war team. Uh, I have a very wide roster. Clearly I have everything unlocked. But you'll notice that... You know, some of these characters are just here for Blitz teams, and I don't get more Blitz teams until level 70 anyway, so. Um, characters I'm notably missing, not worth farming, not worth farming, not worth farming, not uh, unfarmable, you know. Sinister, haven't bought him once. These are just all Sinister shards I've accrued over time. Graviton, still 47 of 100. My bad, I thought I had more. I just don't care, you know. Uh, still going into the war store. Hey, look, it's Sif. Cool. What else is in here? Nothing. What's over here? Uh, I'm buying Heimdall in this store every day. Uh, Sabretooth. Sure, I'll buy him up. Uh, again, resources I'm kind of saving because I'm, I'm specifically buying up, uh, you know, stuff like this as it comes up. Not really farming Blob. Not worried about him. He's unlocked. Uh, any, any, nope. I'm only buying tier, you know, Red Star upgrades on key characters right now. I'll let the orbs kind of do their work for the rest of it. Uh, milestone orb, fun. You know, at this point, everything I'm getting has some degree of value. Uh, we are about two weeks away, maybe, from hitting level 70. So hopefully, we're, my goal was 10-month Ultron, right? Complete free-to-play player, complete casual, targeting on this 10-month Ultron. Could you get it faster? Yes. Could you get it faster not, like, doing something different? Maybe. Would you probably have to spend money? Yes. Are you going to have a better time in Dark Dimension 2 with uh, Star Wars, Minerva, and, like, that's it, like, other good characters than you will with literally any other team you've ever heard someone tell you to bring in? Yeah, 100% will. Absolutely. It's going to be a nightmare using anyone else. And that's just the truth. Um, but this is the this is the seven-month recap, guys. This is the entire point of it. And I tried to keep this to roughly the same size as a normal video, just so you guys have that, like, feel. Uh, even though it wasn't very interactive, but I did want to get all of this information across. Um, this way you don't have to watch, you know, 48 hours of Tony videos to catch up. This is just that one total video catch up for everybody. Uh, and this week, obviously, we'll return to a wide format where we're just having fun and playing through. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to comment down below. I will 100% ignore them because I don't care. Uh, <laughs> But uh, you know how to find me on Discord, Instagram. You know where I am. So have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.